Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, that sashimi looks so good. But you know what? If you eat it, you're gonna die. Because there are about 10 different things about sashimi that could kill you. And you're about to find out what they are right now. And as always, remember this word of caution. Make sure you watch this video right to the end so that you don't miss a single thing that could kill you. Absolutely, do not imitate me. And also remember that uh, this video's information is meant only as entertainment and or informative, educational purposes. Do your research. If you're gonna eat sashimi made at home, do your research. If the only thing you're willing to do is watch this one video and then think you're ready to go, I'm telling you right now, do not make your own sashimi at home. This is not meant as an authoritative video on sashimi safety. You know, last night when I started the video, I had what I thought was an awesome idea. <laughs> But no, I thought, okay, I'm gonna do a video about the 10 things that could kill you with dangerous sashimi, so wouldn't it be cool if I made sashimi out of an actual fish while explaining this to people? So yeah, I went and I got a fish, a live fish, and I tried to sashimi it while explaining this stuff in this video, and I can't stress it enough, I, I really suck at multitasking. I <laughs> when I saw what I had done to that fish meat while cutting it up, while trying to explain all these things, yeah, it was absolutely horrifying. My apologies. I'll show you that as part of this video, but only in snippet. I'll do the explanation this way, and you'll see things edited in, and I apologize. Okay, folks, I went out and I got a live fish, right? Okay. Bam! Reason number one. Leaving it at room temperature. For example, I've had this happen to me. You go to a party and then as the night goes on and you get hungry, you're really hungry and you're looking at that table going, all right, there's sushi, uh, what could go wrong? Don't do it, it's not worth it. Reason number two, poison. Um, yeah, there are poisonous fish. Uh, kind of famous, I guess, is the most obvious one, Japanese fugu, puffer fish. It's not that it's not delicious, I've had it twice myself, but you have to go to school for a long time in Japan to be able to get your license for fugu. It's not the only poisonous fish out there, you do actually have to pay attention to this. Reason number three that sashimi could kill you, parasites. Things like anisakis, that one's a nasty one, remember that name. Roundworm, all the different flatworms, all these kind of things, yeah, they are found in fish meat, and I'm talking to the tune of 90%. If you've had fish, 10 times in your life, nine of those times, you've most likely eaten some kind of parasite. Different worms will invade different parts of the human body, but one of the common things that happens is that you get all these pains, diarrhea, things like lung fluke, as the name would imply, will attack your lungs. It'll, it'll actually destroy its way through your inner tissues until it ends up in your lungs, and then you'll have chronic lung problems. And chronic, yeah, means forever. You're never gonna get better. It's in there. And liver fluke, by the same token, it will burrow into your liver and cause problems in that way. Again, not worth it for a piece of fish. The thing about parasites, I mean, 90% of fish do have them, but if you cook the fish, duh, obviously you're not gonna get hurt by them. You know, I bought a brand new uh, pair of kitchen scissors just for this video to try to cut the spines off of that fish. And I thought it would be up to the task, but as you can see, no. Really nasty one that I'll mention right at the end of the video. Ugh. Oh man, this, is, this spike is super hard. Ugh, come on. Ugh. Ugh. Bailey, come here. Bailey, come here, come here. Ugh. Maple cook? Let's see if this does the trick. Yupper! Anisakis is also known to live in the guts of marine mammals, and when a human eats them, yeah, it causes all kinds of excruciating problems. I am standing exactly on the wharf. You might know this place. This is exactly where that little girl got grabbed by the sea lion and pulled into the water right there. But I was here, just like I just missed it. And I even have video. Oh, Deka! It's huge! It's huge! Well, it's an actual, like, live seal. Yeah, it's a sea lion, man. That's not a seal. It's ginormous. Reason number four that sashima could kill you. Wrong species. Everybody's familiar with salmon or tuna or maybe even Thai. These are very common because they're good species. They're not species that are very prone to different parasites. 
Uh, you might have noticed that things like halibut and flounder and turbot, cod, they do not often, if ever, appear on sashimi menus because they are very prone. Cod in particular has, an, has a worm named after it, cod worm, and you don't want to be eating that. Okay, reason number five, not frozen. Sashimi has to be frozen by law in North America to be served in a restaurant. It needs to be held at a specific temperature for a specific amount of time. It's something like negative 20 for a week or negative 35 for three days or 15 hours or something like that. The point is you cannot just catch a fish and then slaughter it and eat it as is. You stand a very high chance of getting sick. Emergency room doctors often find fishermen who have done that and come down with something. You know, we eat salmon, we eat tuna. Ah, uh, ugh, head. Okay, let's see what this guy's been eating. These guys are algae feeders. Oh, there's his stomach. Okay, and it's full of algae. That's a good sign. That seems like kind of a natural diet. These are, there's nothing to. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, reason number seven. It's frozen long enough, but defrosted wrong. The way you're supposed to do it is take it out of the freezer and then put it into the fridge and let it warm up to fridge temperature. You shouldn't just take it out of the freezer and leave it on the counter and let natural room temperature defrost it. That's just asking for trouble. Okay, reason number eight. Defrosted correctly, but then left in the fridge too long. Now, I have to say that I've been guilty of this too. I've, I've pulled tuna, let's say, out of the freezer and left it in the fridge, thinking, oh yeah, I'll make sashimi tomorrow with it. And then I get caught up in whatever it is I'm doing. And two, three days go by, sometimes a week. And a week later, I'll pull it out and go, oh, uh, I totally forgot about this. Yeah, yeah, I didn't eat it, obviously. Uh, out of curiosity, I opened the package and the tuna was all slimy. And yeah, that's a very good indicator that microbial action is going on. Do not eat sashimi in that state. You don't need to throw it away either. You can just bury it in the garden because fish tissues make excellent fertilizer. Reason nine, it was sourced from a dirty water source. Now we all know that the earth is getting more and more polluted all the time. That there are lakes and the rivers and oceans that are full of pollution and this chemical, that chemical, antibiotics, you know, you name it, it's in there. You could have done everything else right with your sashimi, but if it came from dirty water, yeah, you run the risk. When you make sashimi at home, you've got to be extra careful about what kind of body of water this fish came out of. Generally speaking, if you go to a reputable fish seller, somebody who's known for making sashimi and a high turnover, that's not gonna be a problem for you. That's probably the safest way to go. You know, you know in the end, what I recommend that you do is, is go to, it doesn't have to be Japanese, go to a place that has a good reputation for making sashimi. And I'm not talking about a restaurant, I'm talking like a supermarket or, or something like that. Yeah, because they're gonna have good water, they're gonna have the good practices, and it's gonna be fresh, gonna be, have been frozen to the adequate, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, if you buy it in a place like that and you use common sense with food safe handling and all that kind of stuff, you should be fine serving sashimi at home. Okay, reason number 10. Probably the nastiest one of them all is a spirometra worm, which is found in a lot of freshwater fish. You can get it from, you know, uh, freshwater crustaceans, that kind of thing. That won't just burrow through your organs, it'll actually make its way into your brain and cause brain damage. Uh, there was a guy in China who had one in his brain for about 12 years and they couldn't find it because it's not normally something that shows up in a lot of tests. Those of you who are uh, really good at spotting things have already noticed that this is a freshwater fish. Freshwater sashimi is just bad. Don't do it. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to plate your sashimi. You wanna take tsuma, which is the shredded daikon. And daikon is also known as lopo or lobat. It's a big Chinese white radish. You wanna get your oba, also known as mint or perillia or sisa. I love this stuff. Oh, I wish you could smell it. It smells excellent. Ooh, I love that smell. Okay, let's take our tsuma and we're gonna put some down on the, on the plate like this. This is really good for creating volume because you can't just put sashimi onto the plate and have it look beautiful. I mean, it's, it's good to build height and some, some shape to it. That's what we're trying to do with the tsuma. There you go. Next, put down a perillia leaf, like this. And the color contrast is really nice. 
It's already starting to look like a sashimi plate, eh? We'll just slice our fish like so, in long diagonal cuts. Remember to pull your knife and place the slices onto the plate, just like you see me doing here. One after another, just slice them and place them. Slice them and place them. Slice number three. And slice number four because that's so lucky in Asian culture. Yes, that is sarcasm. Okay, and we'll just open the cap and give it a squeeze just like this. Oh yeah. Okay, and I'll just bring that up to the camera for you to look at. There you go. How do you like that? Almost forgot some citrus. And I'll bring it up to the camera for you to take a good look at it. There you go. Lethal sashimi plate. How do you like that? Uh, okay, I guess the only thing left to do is eat it. But before that, I just need a beer. <laughs> this is the beer. I did not make this one. Today, I was, you know, out shopping to make this video and I bought it for one reason. See the frog? Look at the name of the brewery. Can you read it? Is that in focus? Yeah, dead frog. I'm not pumping their brand. They didn't sponsor this video or anything. But it made me think, dead frog. Remember that very most nasty parasite that I told you about, Spirometra? Well, one of the places you can get Spirometra is from eating undercooked frog. Uh, it's an apricot beer. Here we go. Ah. All right, cheers everybody. Whoa, mmm, that's actually respectable. Well done, well done, dead frog. All right, before I put this thing in my mouth, one more time, I'm gonna tell you, this is lethal. No matter how pretty it might look, this will kill you. I. I'm gonna eat it. Well, I'm gonna put it in my mouth. I'm gonna chew it. I'm gonna taste it so that you guys don't have to risk your life to know what it tastes like. I'm not gonna swallow it because that would be suicide. Why would I do that? Ah, I don't, I can't make it clear enough. Don't imitate me at home. I'll see it in a bunch of languages. How about that? Okay? Don't imitate me at home. Don't eat this unless you want to die. Yoiko wa mane shinai de kudasai. Kansui gyo na sashimi ya de. Okay, after all of that warning, if you still go ahead and do this, that's all on you. I've warned you and I've warned you and I've warned you every way I can think of. <sighs> Okay, into the soy sauce, and we'll see how it tastes. Now, I'm gonna put my face in the camera just to show you that I'm actually putting this in my mouth, okay? Okay, hi! Mmm! Mmm, it's actually really good. <laughs> it's delicious! Oh man, I wish I could swallow it! Okay, ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, so when I ate that sashimi, it was delicious. You know, out of force of habit, it just started to go down my throat. And that's why I started to gag. It was bad. I mean, it was, as they say in Japanese, it was yabai. And just as a little bonus for those of you who have stuck with me all this way to the end of the video, I'm gonna show you actually behind the scenes in my kitchen. This is behind the scenes at the Maple Kitchen. Okay, so remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Because life should be joyful. Love you guys. Bye-bye.